My message today I want to deal with is courage about your conviction through opposition. Courage about your conviction through opposition. Now, I'm going to deal with uh, uh, John chapter 9 verses uh, 20 and 22. Now, this, I'm talking about a blind man. The blind man's parents were afraid of being cast out. And then I will jump down and say that how go to God, the, the, the blind man was cast out because of his conviction and the opposition that were against him. So let's talk about this, my friend. And read in John 9, 20 and 22 and read, and his parent answered and them and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. By what mean he now seeth they lying, we know not, or what open, or who opened his eyes they lying, we know not. He's of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself, and he did. Then these words spake his parents because they fear, what did I say? They fear the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he was the Messiah. He was a son of man. He should be put out of the synagogue, put out of the church. My subject is courage about your conviction to opposition. So we'll see that there's five things happen in this opposition. And the parents lied that this is our son. But we how he received his sight. And we don't know who gave him his sight back. Five things. Number one, they were afraid of the Pharisees and scribe. What it was? They were afraid of the man. They were afraid of religious leaders. That's number one. Now this is this is uh five F's. They glory to God. Number two, they were looking too much toward the flesh. They saw these religious leaders and say, if any man confess Jesus, they will be cast out of the synagogue. So what they did, they believe. And they didn't confess that Jesus healed their son. And the third thing happened. They were attached to feeling too emotional of being put out. There are a lot of people like that, my friend. They shout, 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 shout until the house fall down. When it's time for them to witness about Jesus, they changed their mind. Hey, glory to God. So we see that, number three, they were attached to feelings too emotional of being put out. And fourth thing happened. They were not on the foundation, which is the rock. And the rock is Jesus Christ. The Bible talk about if the foundation is on the rock, you're going to stand. If it's on the sand, the sand going to come. Sand is trouble. When trouble comes, by and by, you are offended and you backslide back into the world of sin with Satan. Hey, glory to God. Amen. So let's go over this one time. Number one, they were fearful. Number two, they looked toward flesh. Number three, they were too attached to feelings. Number four, they, they, they were not on a foundation. And the foundation is, is, is Christ. He's the rock. And the fifth thing, they were not firm on their conviction of who Jesus Christ is to them. They believe the Pharisees and scribes. They were afraid to confess Jesus. How many people know, my friend, they are afraid to say they are Christian? They attend church. But attending church and being a Christian is two different things. If you if you are a Christian, you study the word of God, you pray every day. Hey, glory to God. Amen. You read the word of prophecy. Hey, glory to God. Amen. But if you are a churchgoer, you have no time to read. You have no time to pray. You have no time to fast. The only thing you have, do, you have time to do is shout, 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 and speak in tongues. Hey, glory to God. Now, hey, glory to God. Now, this time... The blind man was being cast out. He was cast out of the synagogue. Why? Because he stood on his conviction. He stood on his testimony. I don't, I don't care many time to interrogate the man. He stood on his conviction. And if you're watching the video, my friend, people going to want to want you to change your mind. But if I was you, if you you you, you gonna stand upon your conviction, you're gonna stand on where God brought you from, you're gonna stand. The Bible says, stand and glory to God. So, verse 34. They, they answered him and said unto him, Thou 
altogether were born in sin. Yes, they were, he was born in sin. And does thou teach us? And they cast him out. So after they interrogate the, this, this blind man, he go to God. And they say that you will teach us. You was born in sin. He go to God. And we know that Jesus Christ say his, his blindness was not according to sin. He go to God. So what they did, they cast him out. Now, in verse 35, that Jesus heard that they have cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Does thou believe on a son of God? That's my message, my friend. Do you believe in the son of If you believe in the son of God, my friend, you'll be following everybody on YouTube. Because almost everybody on YouTube. Now, I'm not saying that I got all the truth. Amen. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's some people on there on YouTube just for clicks and subscriptions. But there's some people on YouTube, they will tell you that the way you sin is death. They'll tell you that if it's sold to the flesh, you'll reach corruption. They'll tell you that there's a one God. So the, the, the Bible says, and they cast him out. Now, six things, six to ten things happen. The blind man, the blind man had faith rather than fear. He was convicted that Jesus Christ healed him. What it was, he was convicted, convinced that Jesus Christ healed him. He didn't change his testimony. I don't care what his parents say about him. That's number six. Number seven, the blind man was firm in his testimony of, the, of his deliverance. He did not waver, though they asked him three times, who healed you? Hey, glory to God. He was firm on his testimony. And if you are watching this video, my friend, don't let people persuade you of changing your testimony. He glory to God. Hello, number eight. The blind man faced fear of being thrown out of the church, of the synagogue. His parents, he glory to God, they say, this is our son, but how he received a sight, we know what. They got, they got, they got attitude with it, with the first he described. They say, he's of age, ask him. <laughs> Glory to God. Why? Because he was afraid. Amen. Number nine. The blind man stick to the fuel of fire through opposition of these religious leaders pushing him to the change his testimony of not being blind. It was not Jesus healing his eyes. They want the blind man to change his testimony. They want the blind man to say it was not Jesus because Jesus Christ is a sinner. The, the blind man say marvelous. Hey, go to get the marvelous thing. Hey, can God, can a sinner open my eyes? One thing I know, and they say, would you, would you be his, would you be his disciple? They say, we are Moses' disciple. It's amazing. That's why I don't believe in seven day Adventists. Hey man, I, I was born a seven day Adventist, but I came out because I started reading the Bible, I started studying the Bible, and I started praying. Helen G. White is not the spirit of prophecy. Helen G. White believed that Jesus Christ, he go to God, was Michael the Archangel. And Jesus Christ is our eternal rest. It's not a Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Hey man, hey, glory to God. So, number 10 thing will happen the blind man stayed in the fight. Through his neighbor, say he was is not the same man. That's number one. Number two, though his his parents feared to, of being put out of the church, he say I'm not going to change my testimony, even though my parents didn't testify. And the third thing happened: these religious leaders say, believe if this Jesus was God, he could not break the Sabbath day. Jesus Christ broke the Sabbath day, my friend, because Jesus Christ is God. The Bible says, my friend, listen, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is all right. The Bible says, come unto me, all he that have laid and I will give you rest. So the rest is in Jesus. It's not in a day. It's in a person, and the person is Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you are a seven-day Adventist, my friend, seven-day Adventist is a cult. What I say? Seven-day Adventist is a cult. And people love to follow cultic movement because it sounds good. My friend, it's not about a sound. It's about sound doctrine. Hey, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the fourth thing, they put him out because he did not change his conviction or his testimony of being healed and delivered. So if you're watching this video, my friend, I'm telling you, you have courage about your conviction through opposition. This blind man did not change. He didn't afflict. He didn't waver. He stood on and they threw him out. And Jesus Christ found that they threw him out. And Jesus Christ do believe in the Son of Man. 
And he said, who is he? He said, I'm he. So I'm telling you, my friend, with coming these last and evil days, people gonna want to change, want you to change their change your testimony and follow their gods. Now, now, people make a mistake of putting Lord G O D. God is not to be disrespectful. God is capital G O D. What I say, capital G O D is God. Lowercase G O D is gods. So don't make the mistake of saying. God is lowercase. God is capital G-O-D. So courage about convicting, conviction to your opposition. My friend, you're going to have a lot of opposition. And it start in your home. It start among your friends. It start on your, your so-called buddy you grew up with. All of a sudden you change. They say that you're not the same person. Glory to God. You've been brainwashed. No, my friend, I'm not being brainwashed. I just have been chained. If you are a Christian, you have changed. You change your conversation, you change your clothes, and you change your character. Those three things happen when you become a Christian. You change your conversation, you change your clothes, and you change your character. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's all in the Bible. I know y'all saying they're no church clothes. Yes, that's true. They're no church clothes. But the Bible says, just as becoming saint, amen, glory to God, courage about your conviction to opposition. My friend, if you ain't got no opposition, you're not saved. Hey, glory to God. I say, if you don't have no opposition, it's not, the Bible says, my, my enemy is of my, ho my household. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, when Jesus Christ was teaching, and they say, Jesus, your, your mother, your brother's, I here to see you. Jesus Christ said, these are my brother, my sisters, and my mother. They that do the will of my father are my sister and my brother. Hey, glory to God. So I'm telling you, my friend, courage about your conviction through opposition. Do you have an opposition, my friend? You are Christian. If not, check yourself out. Because, my friend, when you come this way, all hell house going to be on you. They're going to throw the kitchen and the kitchen sink at you. Why? Because you are different. The Bible says, if any man being Christ is a new creature, old things are passed away, all things become new. You are a new creation. So the new opposition, new level, new devil. If you ain't got no new devil, my friend, you're still stagnated. When you talk about Jesus, here come the devil. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. My friend, this blind man, when they throw him out. Why? Because you stick to his testimony. I'm telling you right now, if you're watching the video, my friend, stick to your testimony. Even though you have pain in your body, still stick to your testimony. He may not come on your warning, but he's always on time. And a blind man, they throw him out of the synagogue. Why? Because he stick to his testimony.